Welcome to On The Journey, stories for leaders and aspiring leaders. This is your host, Leo Rodriguez. I'm very excited about bringing you a little preview of what this podcast is all about. Behind it, there is a very simple idea, and it is to give you an honest inside view into the experiences of leaders who are in the trenches that are executing and deploying high levels of leadership today, just like you and me. On the Journey is a platform for them to share and for you to learn how they are traversing that journey. And I want to do this by exploring specifically their transition points, whether they were an account executive or an individual contributor and they moved into a leadership role for the first time, or as they progressed into higher levels of leadership in their careers. Through honest, no holds barred conversation, I will explore their motivations, their preparation, their mindset, who their mentors were, frameworks, mistakes, thoughts, and advice. So you can put them into action on your own journey. If you're a leader or an aspiring leader, you'll have a first row seat to my guest experience, almost like if you can join me and together we can pick the brains. So are you ready? Let's go. Welcome to On The Journey. Enjoy. Welcome to On The Journey, Season 1, Episode 1. This is the first episode of the podcast. I'm extremely excited and I couldn't have thought about a better first guest than James Dwyer and I want to introduce him briefly today. So James professionally is the Regional Vice President of Enterprise and Strategic Sales in the south of Altrix. And that's where James and I met. And ever since then, we developed our relationship and kept in touch with each other. Uh, James is not only a great person, but also is a fantastic leader that has a very interesting leadership journey, leadership development journey, and he shares it all during the podcast. So he talks about how he started performing the role of a leader even before getting a title and how important that is to start deploying leadership even before you get the title, before you become or have a team. He also talks about his personal 12-month development plan into leadership that he put together very intentionally, had his mentors participate, multidisciplinary set of mentors, and how that helped him in his journey into leadership. I think it's one of the most interesting part of the episode. He talks about the traits of the people that he hires and how important he's hiring into the team and how he seeks for those traits. And finally, Uh, One of the last kind of hints that I'll give you today in the intro is his leadership progression, the framework and how he thinks about leadership progression from me to us to letting go and transferring. And he talks about each one of those stages. So I hope you enjoyed as much as I enjoyed it interviewing James and you take a couple of things that you can go and implement today. So good luck. Enjoy it. Welcome to On The Journey. I'm really excited. Ever since you and I had the prep conversation, I just could not imagine a better person to, to have my first, uh, my first podcast. So um, I, I think success guaranteed with, with James. So uh, I'm, I'm very excited. So I'll start with this. You and I, you and I manage or, or led or are leading a person, a common person, and he, every once in a while, he reminds me that the best leader he ever had uh, is James, James Dwyer. And uh, partially it makes me jealous because I can't, I can't live to that expectation. But also um, makes me want to dig in. And um, I don't know if you know the person, we'll save the name, but... Uh, it's just I'd I love to hear from you why why somebody uh, that you led before uh, can describe you like that. That's a great compliment and also a great question. Um, and and first and foremost, thank you so much for having me on this. Uh, the feelings are mutual. Um, when I got the call from you the other week, I, I absolutely jumped at that opportunity to speak with you here today because um, I have the utmost respect for you. And so if, if I can you know, help in any way, you know, the broader sales community. Um, That's what truly fulfills me. And so this is such a great idea. I I love the probably gap in the market that that you're filling with this podcast. And so thanks for having me as as an attendee um, and a speaker. So I don't know who that is. And I'm not going to try to guess. um, But that is, uh, it's, it's rewarding to hear. 
And it's also why, you know, we work so hard and put so much into it. And um, I, without knowing any details, the, the philosophy that I approach every single day with on, you know, leadership characteristics and approach and philosophy is, you know, the, the, uh, the, the team doesn't work for me. I work for the team and their success is my success. Um, I'm a sum of all factors and also an average of the team. And so the, the greatest uh, support that I can provide to the team is ensuring that they're set up for success. And that's, that's the number one thing that I wake up with every single day. How do we make sure that the team's successful, which means our customers are successful. So again, I don't know any details, but that uh, it's, it's kind to hear. It, it's great. It's great. And, and um, look, when I met you, when we worked together, I, I've, uh, I've had a glimpse of that. And I wasn't surprised when this person uh, mentioned you um, in, in that light. And, 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 and that made me, makes me wonder, um, what, what inspired you to, or what triggered your desire to become a leader. A lot of people don't don't have that. They they shy from a leadership role. Um, so where where did you get that? Where how how did it start? Yeah. So it's um, the beauty of sales profession is everybody has different backgrounds and everybody has different strengths and opportunities for improvement and you know goals and aspiration aspirations and what what drives individuals. Um, for me personally, um, I started to get extremely curious and um, uh, thoughtful about going to leadership um, after a number of highly successful individual contributor years. And what I realized over the course of, you know, being an IC, working closely with the team members, including our go-to-market team members, including our leadership teams, and obviously our customers was that the things that were making me personally the happiest every single day, you know, hitting the bed every single night, feeling fulfilled was when um, I was helping others. And so whether it's just through in-team collaboration, whether it was through mentor and menteeship type conversations across all tricks or others, you know, my current company, um, whether it was, you know, supporting the broader go-to-market functions to scale out best practices that, you know, unify our teams. Those were the things that made me feel really, really happy every single night. And so I started to think about, okay, so what do next steps look like in my career? And, and, um, when are those, when are those going to happen? Um, I, I went through a lot of learnings through this, you know, internal, uh, self-evaluation process as, as far as what I would love to do in, in my career. And um, I think the interesting thing is I'm learning today from my mistakes uh, yesterday, a couple of years ago. And so what that means is um, there's some, some, some items that I learned through my own personal process that I always try to, you know, instill within folks that I talk with. Um, because again, learn from others' mistakes rather than making them uh, yourself. And uh, so it's uh, it's what I did just just to cut straight to the point. And when I realized that I, I really want to move into leadership and, and the why um, is I was I was having those moments where you know a lot of great success working with our customers directly as as an AE and. Um, and then I, I had a moment, probably an immature moment, where I, I said, hey, there's no jobs coming to me. Why, why am I you know, not getting opportunities to move into leadership? Something that you know, we, we see and hear all the time, the, the expectations. Um, and so what, what I actually did is I, I took a greater role, um, different role to, to continue for self-betterment, but in a, in a slightly different selling motion. Um, the sell to and to through and with of the GSI's management consulting global alliance role um, in order to continue to get better and scale out a team because I thought that that was the right opportunity. Um, it was an incredible opportunity. I learned so much from it. It was a it was a short, you know, thirteen months that I was I was leading global alliances at an automated machine learning company. 
But um, what I learned through that process was, you know, people were here to help and I wasn't raising my hand high enough uh, to let others know in my personal career uh, ambitions and, and aspirations. And so when, when you start to think about uh, people's career journeys and, you know, how did you move from being an AE to a first line manager to second line manager and so forth? I think the number one, number one step is, you know, believe in yourself and then secondly, communicate it, raise your hand. Um, don't be shy because, um, everybody in leadership that I come across and, and I'm very fortunate to work with just incredible people, uh, but everybody's willing and here to help. That is really the number one thing across our teams. And so, uh, the, the folks that raise their hand and let their aspirations be known, that's generally an early stage step as part of those yes. career paths. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, um, it, it, uh, a couple of things that I'm going to kind of, I'm going to pull threads as you, as you um, go through your stories, the, that, that internal calling that you had, right? So, so you had some feeling somewhere deep inside that you you were feeling fulfilled by by helping others that's that's the same that happened to me very early in my career where th there was a there was a above average satisfaction about getting people to cross some some knowledge chasms or sort of skill chasm or or some difficulty that that made me that was rewarding to me um and and the second thread is yeah, being being vocal about what you want to do. I, you know, like you, I manage a a, a, a decent sized team over thirty people. I seldomly hear people coming to me and say, "Hey, I I want to be, I want to I want to start the the journey to a leadership." And and some I know some of them want to do it, but they don't communicate it, and and it's a little mind boggling to me how little people put themselves out there when they want to do it, right? Uh, do, do you experience the same? That you, do, do, do you get flooded with people saying, hey, I want to be a leader, or, or it's, it's, it's rare? So, so I do, and I, I love it because it, it is people raising their hand. And, and so every yeah. time that, I, um, that somebody comes to me and says, I would love to learn your, your personal journey and how do I set myself up for next steps in my career? I, I think I would really love to go into people leadership. And usually my first response, and it's it's from the heart, it's thank you so much for raising your hand and saying something to me, coming to me with this. I love that. Yeah. Because that is personally, I think, you know, one of the first couple of steps. And that's also one of the hardest things to do. Yeah. And it's it's what I what I didn't do a number of years ago. And um and so that's that's the lesson that I try to instill on others. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I, I love I love the response. I was I was going to bet that you your first response is why why do you want to do this? Uh, but I love that yeah. that 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 you're grateful about that. So so you you made that call um, that you want to be in a, in a leadership role. Let, let's let's hone in on on the transition, right? And, and you can you can start as early as you want, but you you transition to a position in another company where you had a leadership role. Um, how how do you reframe your journey and what did you do what did you do on your first major transition to prepare for the role yeah and, and so that's as folks start to look into you know next step in their career and how to transition um it's one of those old adages, you know, you, you try to do the job that you would like before you have that job or you, you, you have to believe in yourself yeah. before anybody else can believe in yourself. You, you have to um, set your own goals before other people can set goals for you. And, and so it's, it's having that initial um, internal motivation to, yes. you know, have greater contributions across not only your own personal role, but also the, the broader um, company and broader, you know, go to market colleagues. And so for me personally, I, uh, I received a call one day and, and it, it went, you know, in, in short, it, it went along the lines of, Hey James, I know you're doing very well at where you are today, but we're starting a new team. Would you love to come back? 
And um, what I look for within a special place is the, 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 the three P's, the people, place, and product. Yeah. And where I am today, I'm, I'm so incredibly fortunate that we have all three. And for me personally, when I'm, when I'm analyzing companies and um, opportunities and situations, it always starts with the people. And so I missed the people that I was uh, previously working with. I missed the place and, and our product. We're just so fortunate to, to like I said, represent it. It's best in the world. And I, I jumped at the opportunity to come back. And so naturally, as a boomerang, people start to say, okay, great. We would love to have you back, but why are you coming back? And how do we ensure right. that um, what happened before is, you know, you left. How do we ensure that that doesn't happen again and you know everybody is mutually set up for success and you don't feel like you have a glass ceiling and we uh, support your personal goals and ambitions and you know personal development and so i was very fortunate to have um, a number of long conversations prior to coming back and accepting right. um, the boomerang role back um, with our uh, executive leadership and a number of uh, SVPs across our go-to-market teams, and as part of the conversations around the why did you know why did you leave, but how can we all do better together? Because you know that's that's the end goal. Uh, we aligned on you know these were some of the 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 not the misses, but these are these are the goals that you know personally would love to be at, and then this is where I also think that I can give even more back to to the organization. And we went through, you know, long discussions and, and we said, okay, great, let's do this. And um, we put in place a personal development plan that, again, has mutual benefits across the board. And, and really, it was about uh, a 12-month plan after rejoining that uh, took me through some of those, you know, key aspects of people leadership uh -huh. for somebody that had never uh been in that role before and That's great. yeah so the um the intent was and, and i can go into details here but uh, the intent was really to ensure mutual you know alignment and success for the betterment of you know the greater good at, at my current company and so um i was very fortunate to have the support and kind of sponsors and stakeholders and mentors um, across many different functions that helped coach me along the way for about 12 months before I got my my first um, uh, management opportunity. And so when that when that time came around, what was helpful was that we, we had done everything possible going back right. to doing the in the role that that you would love before you have it. We had, we had been doing everything possible within my current IC role to ensure that whenever an opportunity came up, whatever it was, you don't know what's going to happen a year from now. Um, but at least we knew that we were doing everything within our, our, uh, our, our mutual powers to ensure that yeah. the opportunity would make, be a good fit and I would be a good fit for that opportunity. And, it, and it's a win either way, right? So it, it, the personal development plan, and I always tell this to uh, the people I work with, it, I can't guarantee the position, but I, 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 one thing I can guarantee is that you're going to take this with your career moving forward um, if you get into a position. So it's, it's not a loss. And, and I think you said something extremely wise, um, which I'm going to highlight at the end of the podcast, which is start start executing parts of the job that you want to have. Um, you don't have to, like a lot of people make the mistake I've seen is like, well, I, I'm going to start being a leader or something when, when I get there. I, and the position comes first. And to me, has always been um, the, the, the position you, you start being before getting the position, right? So personal development plan, 12 months, um, speaks very highly of, of your leadership at the time. Uh, but also highly of you about the patients put in 12 months. Can, can you, do you mind talking a little bit about the plan? What were the, what were the areas that you emphasize? What kind of mentorship you got? Just, just tell me and the future audience, what, what, what is that? 
Yes, thank you. And and so I'm actually looking at it here. I'm, I'm not going to share it on the screen. Oh my god! Um, Piece of history. But, <laughs> yes. So it's uh, there. Were, there are really four core objectives of the personal development plan. And and simply put, they were to prepare myself for a management role through the combination of mentoring, networking, self assessment, team lead, coaching, and training. And so that was just a preparation aspect of the plan, you know, kind of doing the parts of the role when, when you, I'll go through those again, mentoring, networking, self-assessment, team lead, coaching, and training. That's a huge, huge part of our day to day, right? Because we're, we're people yeah. leaders and, and the whole goal is to see, see other success. Um, the second component was to give the company's leadership and, and my peers exposure to who I am, the characteristics that I bring. You know, the, the benefits or the the readiness, um, how, how I'm developing or the qualification on if it's a good fit or not. You know, so again, right. it's, it was a two-way street. Uh, the third one was to, you know, raise your ha hand and be an identifiable leader through team lead activities, um, who went above and beyond, uh, asking for extra projects, uh, you know, really working as hard as you possibly can, but loving loving all the moments while doing it because there's that you know end goal and that passion of the, the why again. And then lastly, it was the, the fourth component was to ensure characteristics and abilities to lead by the time that that next opportunity came. And so to your point, you never know when that next opportunity is going to come. It might come tomorrow. It might come three years from now. Right. But at a bare minimum, by working on you know, self-reflection, self-assessment, self-betterment in spirit of the greater good, to help everybody around you, everybody around you will be getting better throughout this process. Yes. And so with, you know, patience is a virtue. That's, that's uh, something that people say a lot, but it's true. It's, it's, um, you know, not waiting your turn, but, you know, going, getting it, but also understanding that there's a process that takes place and it's, it's in the best interest of everybody. How, how would you qualify the impact and you can you can never know what would have happened in an alternative universe where you didn't have this plan. But how would you qualify the impact of this plan in your in your career? I would say it's it is hard to to quantify. I would say it's immeasurable. I I feel yeah. that yeah, if, absolutely. If I yeah. hadn't gone through so much um, uh, both self reflection, but also receiving support from so many other people. I honestly have no idea where I'd be right now. And it's, yeah. it's, um, it's, you know, you'd, you know, I'd be somewhere, but it's, uh, the, the support that everybody around me provided, it's, I'm for, forever indebted to them. Um, yeah. I'll do anything yeah. for yeah. them from a, yeah. you know, career perspective. Um, and it just strengthens personal relationships across the board. And, and then you hit the ground running by the time it comes along. And so, in my opinion, it's immeasurable because I don't know what what would have taken place if we didn't do this. Yeah. Um, yeah. You fast forward into when that opportunity actually came. We were we were pretty fortunate that uh, it did happen in Q1 of, of 2020. And so it was, it was about one year since right. we put the plan in place, worked really hard as, as kind of job 2.0. And it, it happened. We grew the strategic accounts team by another whole team yeah. and I was um, rewarded with, with the opportunity to lead that team. And so yeah. with, without yeah. that process or that development, I'm not sure what would have happened. With that. No. And I'm, I'm the, the reason why I ask is it's a little selfish because some of the people that work with you work with me, they were, they are my mentors still today and throughout my relationship with them. And by the way, in that team that you build is that person that I told you at the beginning. So I'm, I'm, I'm giving you breadcrumbs uh, of who could be. Um, but one of the one or a couple of the people that help you in, in that personal plan um, are my mentors even today. And through my relationship with them, I had literally epiphanies um, mm -hmm. that that I would have, it, it would have taken me years of experimenting and they just accelerated that by either giving me an operational plan or a handbook or or like how to how to look at the deal right i, I know some of them are the, are common between between mm -hmm. us but uh yeah i'd love you to riff 
maybe a couple of the biggest learnings on on that journey on those 12 months journey talking to you know the jakes and the stews of of the world right yeah so i i think the <clears throat> personally the biggest learning for me was the overall perspective and i i yeah. know that that's kind of wishy-washy it's intangible it's it's hard to quantify um but understanding really what helps people out whether it's people around you, above you, or on your team, understanding those aspects of the role for me personally kind of helped me slow down in the day to day and, and have a different perspective on, you know, what what do I do? What impact can I provide? How do I help other people? And um, and so for me, it was, it was more so the perspective. And then um, just like I I try to have others, you know, learn from from my mistake, not raising my hand high enough. Um, I absolutely learned a lot of different characteristics or kind of um, key components of amazing right. leadership from such uh, an incredible network of, of mentors. And so whether it was, you know, out operational rigor or whether it was building uh, a team almost from scratch or whether it was, you know, leading a team with a really positive and healthy culture. Um, whether it was understanding the ins and outs of the finance side of the house, whether it was, you know, building close networks across product management and or the SC team to understand, you know, how product dev and, and, and SC and more of the technical side also flow into just yeah. the, the sales side. And so uh, there were there are pieces that over the course of those 12 months, I jotted down every single um, uh, piece of information that I really struck a positive chord. Um, and I, I look at those today because that perspective, it always helps to think back on the why and, and how did you get here? And you know, how do we go forward by leveraging what's really great in the previous learnings? But let's yeah. not forget about those. Um, the one the one thing that was a curveball in in my journey, you know, my first leadership role was in, in 2020. And so you know, January one goal, goal number one was to hit, hit the road with every single AE, start to know them, understand them, know them, you know, what, what they love, who they are, you know, um, and then COVID hit. Yeah. And so it was COVID, you know, hit travel stopped probably end of February, early March or so. And so I'd, I'd yeah. made it on, on the road with every single person on the team other than one. And we were supposed to go to, uh, to Bentonville, Arkansas, to go see the Nestle category brand management team for Walmart. And that trip canceled. And I said, oh, no, it's not going to be able to hit the road. But, you know, thinking back again on, on how challenging of a moment of kind of, okay, no travel, COVID, what's going on? And then a full year, you know, fast forward a couple of years, it was still around. And, and so to, to, to have the experience of doing the role before you have it and such a close group of, you know, senior professionals that are, are willing to help and, you know, considered close friends and mentors of mine now. Um, but having those people, uh, you know, in my court during a, a COVID year as my first ever year of leadership, that was really uh, impactful and helpful because, you know, relationships, empathy, yeah. understanding, yeah. We're all in it together. And so I, uh, it was a really hard year for everybody across the, the world, but, um, professionally as, as we zoomed out of, uh, out of that one into my, my year two, um, we were able to, to hold it together very well. We had a very successful year. Um, in spite of the it, pandemic, in spite of the pandemic. Yeah. Everybody was virtual, brand new leader, brand new team. And in spite of the pandemic, we held it together extremely well. And, and that's a testament to, you know, understanding people are people, the human aspect of things, but also yeah. loving who you work with and working really hard for them. Right. Right. So I, I take that year and I always try to build off that because it's one of those moments where if you can make it through that year, everything else is, is going to be okay. Yeah. Cause it yeah. was yeah. a tough leadership year. Crisis, crisis, uh, crisis leadership uh, makes you learn. I learned so much, and I think that's that's the period where where you and I worked in the same place. So, yeah, right. I, I it, it, 
look, this is this is golden so far, and and I'm I'm sure the people that that will be listening will be learning a lot. Um, the the couple of things I want to highlight from the plan is that when I when I'm personally hiring and interviewing for leadership, I always always ask the question what happened before your first leadership role and and i'm always looking and this is a little bit of a giveaway if if people is gonna interview for me it's like what what happened what i'm looking for is did you get any any training any mentorship did you seek out any anything like that um did you prepare put a plan together took 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 training took academic training i i don't care what it is in particular, we'll, we'll dig into that. But I always look at forethought from from the leaders I'm at, I'm I'm interviewing. And the second thing is, you you can do this for many years and never be perfect. So the the implicit concern when you're going through a plan or a mentorship is like, well, when when am I going to be done? And you're never done. You're you're not done before taking a leadership role. And you're never done when you're a leader because, you know, all of a sudden three months in and you get a pandemic, right? So, so <laughs> who could have like 12 month plan, you're Superman and boom, like a complete unforeseen global event hits you. So, um, I, I appreciate you going through that, uh, in detail this is, uh, critically important. Yeah. Um, what, what was like when you got obviously you got hit by the pandemic right so but in the fundamentals of of leading a team what what was different from what you expected um uh, in leading people and leading a team and taking a team uh, obviously you you had your plan you knew quite what was coming but what what was different that in your mind was going to play out one way and it played a different a different way so, so that's a that's a tricky question. That's a really great question. And so that's one of those questions I, I see it in, in almost a two answer question. Yeah. And so one reason I think, um, you know, attempting your best to do the role before you have the role um, mm -hmm. is so critical and important is because that prepares you for all of those surprises when you, you know, uh, get that get that opportunity um the more preparation practice you have running into that next role the less surprises there will be and so i personally uh, the, this there weren't surprises as far as um i can't believe it's going this way or i can't believe people are operating that way there weren't any you know big reactions on my end because i think to the extent um but I, I think that the surprises to me, if, if I had to give, you know, a couple would be all around the, the people aspect again. And so with, you know, with the perspective that um, we're all in it together, that, you know, I'm here to support the team, um, you, you throw in the, the, uh, the, the pandemic, you know, having empathy and understanding that everybody, everybody's different and everybody yeah. has different skills and opportunities to get better. Um, people are not their number at all. You know, we're, we're all just doing as best as we possibly can every single day, you know, working with one another. And so it's um, having that, you know, understanding that people are, are truly people. We're not, you know, just robots or employees and we're not a number. We're not, we're not a headcount. Um, understanding the people aspect of things to me, you know, was both part of the prep, but also one of the surprises because it came so true. Yeah. It's, it's amazing the amount of, you know, uh, conflict resolution and yeah. surprises and curveballs and, and personal items and it, on and on, right? Because everybody's different. It's, it's the beauty of, of what we do, including specifically in sales. And so there's so much difference between everybody. That was such a surprise to me, yeah. but also I, I'd like to think that going in with the open mind, I was somewhat prepared for that, but yeah. it's a, a daily thing. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I empathize completely. Um, the, the way my brain or the way I think about it is like a, when you're an individual contributor, you have your set of dials, the deals, the calls, yeah. the prospects, the people on the other side, which are the customers. And, and when you move into a leadership role, 
those dials change completely because you start now dealing with internal conflict and 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 people and their own idiosyncrasies and how do they react to a new set of quotas or new compensation plan or a deal that went sideways. Some of them are extremely resilient. Some of them are like linger on it for, for two months. Yeah. And um, I, I think when you mention people aspects, that's, that's part of what I, I also found managing a team and the bigger the team that escalates almost exponentially um and, and and it takes a few cycles as a leader to be able to to deal with that with empathy and not get you know sometimes get get derailed by that and, and there were there were definitely yeah. a couple moments early on when you know you, you prepare but but you don't you don't know until you go through it exactly and um i do remember some specific times when when i had um a moment where i, I said Okay, it's happening. This this is this is what we've been talking about, but this is now actually happening. Okay, yeah. Take a deep breath. Let's take a step back and approach it, you know, um, in a thoughtful way, rather than um, again, if if we weren't doing the prep work and understanding kind of what was part of the world before it, it would have been the first time ever, and that situation could have thrown me into a tailspin. Absolutely. And so, yeah. It's uh, there. It's it's a it's a curveball every day. It's it's amazing. That's that's part of the beauty of this job. Yeah, and and I think the importance of the plan again. I go back to that. The plan creates that space for you to be able to take a step back and know know what at least the the shape of what's coming. Right. Um, what are the two, three, four things, and or one or two uh, that you keep an eye or you kept an eye when you were a first line leader like your first experience or second but as a first line leader that you kept an eye kept an eye like like very consistently that like 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 your job depends on it right um obviously the numbers and and and, and those things but if you if you had a aspiring leader in front of you what would you tell her or him to really keep an eye on yeah, great, great question. So after um, after the COVID year, we, we had a reorg, and, and so I led a team in the southern district of, of the United States. And so um, it, it was a geographical reorg in which um, a number of different selling roles reported to me, global, strategic, enterprise, and, and uh, land. Yeah. And so... For me personally, again, it's it sounds cliche at this point, but I'll continue to go back to the people. And the reason I say that is because when when you think about those four different roles, global strat, enterprise, and land, everybody's speaking a different language. Yes. And, you know, extremely senior, self-sufficient AEs, sending, selling multi-million dollar contracts, working with the largest customers across the planet. Um, is much different uh, sales team or selling motions than, uh, for example, a land AE. Somebody foot in the door, getting the first sale and starting to build upon the relationship from there. And so that was a personal challenge of, of mine. But the thing that I, I was extremely cognizant of, and I, I wanted to make sure that everybody felt this, was that Everybody was in it together. Everybody's part of the same team and everybody's helping each other in a very collaborative way. Right. And um, it goes back to the people side because when, when you bring on people with that, uh, that perspective and those personalities and those willingness to help some, you know, that true team camaraderie, um, it will be better than if everybody's, for example, a, a lone wolf or, or not supporting one, one another. And so that to me, obviously, in addition to the numbers and the pipeline and the results and the customer experience and, and on and on, um, that to me was the thing that I had to ensure that everybody was getting their needs met, both from myself on the leadership side, but also throughout the team. Because again, there's, there's opportunities for betterment across the team, global AEs, coaching, land AEs, land AEs helping global ease, uh, remember to, to prospect, you know, yeah. through automation and, and <laughs> SDR almost type cadences. Right. And so yeah. 
it was a really good learning opportunity for, for everybody. Um, I'm extremely proud of that year. Uh, we, we were fortunate to win global team of, of the year at, at my company. And, and that wow, was a congrats. direct That's testament. To, thank you. And it's, it's, it's their award. It's just amazing because it's direct testament to all of the hard work and collaboration that they put in together in addition to myself. And yeah. so, um, you're only as strong as, you know, you know, your, your weakest link, but also rising tide lifts all boats. And so it's one of those things if, if everybody's fully vested and, in, and, in, and in, in it every single day, um, the results, the numbers, those things will come. Yeah. Yeah. So collaboration was extremely important and I, I totally agree. Um, so l let's start transitioning now to now, now, now where you are, you're, you're now above, above leaders. And that's also a transition when you go from, from a first line leader, uh, for a few years where you're intensely working with, um, AEs, you're, you're very much in the deal, not so much as, as AEs, uh, but, but definitely helping out, removing blockers. I would like to explore now when you move into second line leadership and we we can go back to the previous experience. That's fine. If, if you left something that you want to want to touch on, but similar to being a, a, an AE to a first line leadership, it's a completely different set of skill set and, and skills and motions. Right. How, how, how the second, the second line leadership came to you? Did you seek it out? How do you prepare? Was there a plan or was a different type of um, preparation for it? Um, I'd love to know. Yeah, so so it's it's happened quickly, and it's um, it's it's a part of my personal journey that um, I'm humbled by, but also it's a it's a daily challenge. And so it, I I was only in uh, first line leadership for two years before getting the, the promotion into second line this past year and going into year number mm -hmm. two uh, in 2023. Which is um, a pretty good, pretty good second. I mean, it's two years. It, it's, a, it's a good chunk of time for the industry that we're in, right? Some some people in high growth companies move, skip very quickly. Uh, but two yeah. years, I think you had the chance to get your chops and and, yep. and practice all those things. So Sorry to cut your flow, but. No, 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 thank you. Um, and so, so through 2020 COVID year challenges, empathy, building a team, 2021 collaboration, we're all in it together. You know, teamwork makes the dream work, whatever adage we want to say, um, highly successful year, um, with hyper growth. And then as our company is also in hyper growth stage, we did scale the organization. And, um, I've always had, uh, you know, everybody has their strengths and weaknesses. And, and one of my strengths is working with large companies in very complex situations and, and finding a great solution for a customer that they go big on. And so we we did build out our strategic accounts organization to a much greater size. And when that opportunity came up, um, it was unbeknownst to me. And so I didn't realize that we we're going through the growth. I didn't realize that there would be an opportunity. I didn't realize that I was even being considered. Um, I had my head down working as hard as possible for the team. And if there was still side projects, if there was opportunities, if I could be the leader within my current team to my second line at the time, that was, that was my number one goal. And so I look at the, you know, from AE to, to first line, raising hand, um, first line to second line in my own personal experience, it was just being the best version of, of myself and representing the team and having them represented in the best version possible every single day, um, which uh, ended up working out very well. Um, I also go, I'll go back to the people. I, I, I look to hire just incredible characters. And so high, high character individuals, um, uh, uh, hardworking, accountable, trustworthy, and just be a really, really good person to work with. Those are the characteristics that I personally look for when I'm when I'm bringing on um, folks into my team because my philosophy when when building teams, including where I am today in second line, and I'll get to kind of letting go and you know the, the transfer of knowledge and um, and those topics. But the uh, 
I have the philosophy, surround yourself with people that are, you know, much more talented and much smarter, you know, and, and better at, at the roles than you are. And, and right. just Absolutely. the same way that collaboration across the team helps everybody involved. If I can bring on A players across the board, people that work really hard, they're trustworthy, accountable, amazing to work with and highly skilled, then we're just going to be a really, really good team. And so I was fortunate enough to find that in 2020, the tough year, uh, hired about 13 AEs or so in 2021 to build out the South Org. Right. Um, found those, those folks, just amazing team. And then same thing this year, uh, now as second line, built out the, the first line leadership level. We've hired nine people in the last six weeks as we continue to scale my team across the country. Um, it's, it's been a lot of fun and, and it, it always comes back to the people just, you know, doing it every single day with those people that, that you, you, you work with. So, yeah. um, it's been fun to see the team's growth. Um, and it's, it's, uh, again, just very rewarding with that perspective, come to the, come to the, the role every day of thinking about how, to, how do we get better as a team? So, look, there are a couple of pulls to thread from what you said, right? So you, you talked about how you hire, and we, we haven't touched on that. Um, but you said hardworking, accountable, high integrity, uh, trustworthy, and um, highly skilled. Can, can you talk a little bit about how do you interview for those? Because I, I think the classic interview process is more like towards skills and achievement. Um, how do you hire? How do you test or hire for some of the other more difficult, I wouldn't call them soft, but I call them more difficult things to, to touch and, and evaluate. They're definitely the soft skills and they're definitely, in my opinion, the hardest to, to determine through, yeah. through interviews. And so similar to the day-to-day, -day, you know, whether it's a customer meeting, an internal meeting, um, I, I approach those as conversations and mm -hmm. it's a two-way street. And let's have a let's have a long conversation and make sure that it's a great fit mutually, um, because again, it's a two way street. So through conversation, I you know I generally get a uh, a fairly good pulse on um, on uh, on the individual or you know the candidate, um, but also you know references and back channeling, and it's a small world and. You mentioned some folks that we mutually know earlier in, in the podcast, and it's true. It's it's uh, I pick up the phone a lot, and you know LinkedIn makes it an even smaller world, yes. and it's it's really easy to 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 get great feedback on people um, and how great they are very quickly these days, and so that's that's a big part of my interview process too is just um, doing some personal you know uh, cross checks through uh, mutual connections. Yeah, no, that's that's uh, that's good, and um, that sometimes is, is some of the challenges that that some leaders have. That you know, that yeah. sometimes you have a lack of network to go check, or when you transition from industry to to industry, you don't know so many people. So um, I, I like the the long conversation. I also tend to have quite a bit longer interviews. Um, in, in my experience, is when when people have the skills, they have it, right? You, it's it's a very short conversations about skills because there is a right. common language, a common touch points on how do you manage deals, how do you hire people. But then, then the thing gets the conversation gets longer when you're talking about more more of the softer things. W what are the like one of the things I probably struggle to today is when, when you are leading leaders. Um, there is a component of trust and, and respect that develops over time. But in the first few days or maybe the first couple of months, that needs to be established. And my, my approach is always trying to be very proactive on that. What are the things that you did at the beginning, whether consciously or unconsciously, to build that leadership, that trust with your senior leaders that, that you, you moved into managing or, or leading, let's say? Uh, people that probably have been leading for for more than two years, right? And yeah, and uh, so so how do you how do you establish that respect that trust? Great question. Um, I I'm a firm believer in that uh, trust is built while you know while while you're in the trenches with the team. Yes, and yeah. so having you know both that human perspective, but also 
that hard work ethic, grit, you know, and, and being in the trenches with the team. Um, over the course of time, that that trust will be built. And so, um, my just like how I how I opened up, my my number one goal is to ensure that everybody's fully supported. And through that, and you know, um, showing how much you you truly do care for them and their success, that naturally over over time starts to build trust in that we're in it together. Um, yeah, it yeah. it is one of the challenges of, of leadership, though, is you know that trust, whether it's between two leaders or between AEs and leaders, um, letting go of the sales processes and the daily items and the opportunities or the negotiations or you know the the, the direct touch on the every single thing uh, taking place with with our customers, that is one of the harder things about leadership, no matter what level you're on. Um, yeah. One thing that uh, that um, personally. I went through as, as a successful AE, but moving in, into people management was letting go. And um, as part of that development program before any leadership roles, I, I, I obtained feedback from peers and, and mentors. Um, what are some of my gaps? And what are some of the, the weak spots that I can improve upon? And letting go was one of those that continued to pop up. Yeah. And so through that preparation, I'll never forget it. And so I'm always self-aware of it. And so as, as you look to, you know, whether it's the day-to-day or the overall business or building a team, having that understanding that that is um, a really, really critical component of uh, high leadership, but also it could be a, a, a gap. Um, being cognizant of that has personally been very helpful for me. And, and we, went, um, we went through sales leadership training just uh two weeks ago in california um and i'll be you, part you of care a, to a mention what company with um uh, it no, was not, not the company that you're working on but the, the 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 one that gave you the training so it was actually from the note Nof singer group oh okay um, okay and we took um we took a disc assessment as kind of the first yeah yeah the first pass and then we'll be building upon that throughout the course of this this year and it's incredible to see how accurate it is. It is. Whether it's you incredible. like some of it or not. Yeah. And it's just <laughs> yeah. like everything else we've been talking about. It's it's understanding, you know, the, the reflection of where you can do better for others and you know, how do you com- communicate best with, with other people that might be from a personality perspective different from you. Yeah. And um one of the items that we covered that I'm really excited to go through this year with with the professional training, but also on a day to day being self-aware and how I'm supporting the team best is as we've continued to scale and grow the org, um, two years ago, it was literally myself and two AEs. And now we're up to 26 AEs and and four total leaders. And so we've, we've gone through hyper, um, hyper growth from a personnel perspective. And so it's, it's required, which I love hyper learning, uh, acceleration of my, my learning for the team. Yeah. And, um, and so I've quickly had to pivot uh, through the different levels of kind of a me, us letting go and transferring of knowledge, um, uh, stage appropriate leadership curve. And so that was one of those items that we covered in the training that I'm personally excited to go through because I do, I do clearly see me, us letting go and transferring as stage appropriate leadership characteristics as teams scale and as roles change. And so um, that will be a challenge for me with my team now that they've all been here for, you know, the leaders have all been here for about a year. And so um, how do we now continue to, you know, drive additional value across the much bigger now organization um, and scale on a productivity standpoint um, by trusting and enabling and allowing the incredible people that I've, I've brought into the company to do their role. Yeah. And so a big part of that is letting go. Um, and that's, that's going to be one of the, the most fun things this year is, you know, seeing them achieve everything that they will, but also, you know, seeing it, you know, if, if, if letting them fly per se. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let me, let me say that you're dropping gold. Every time I, I, I drop a question, you're, you're just dropping gold dust 
in this podcast. I <laughs> I think I'm I'm gonna start charging <laughs> because this has been so great. Um, particularly like like the me us letting go and and transferring and th that you know that in itself can can make the podcast. So I, I think it's a James, I'm going to just say we're going to have a version two at some point because I would love it. I, I, I love it. Yeah. We've been talking it. to Fee for 15 minutes, 50 minutes or maybe maybe an hour. And it feels like we're just on the surface. Uh, but uh, yeah. I, I have a question prepared. There's, there's so much to cover. <laughs> there's so much to cover, so much to cover. And I'm I'm sure the day I publish this, I'm going to get beat up because I didn't go deep on some things. But I'm sure we'll, we'll have an opportunity. This is not the, the last time. <laughs> Um, I'm personally enjoying it tremendously. Um, yeah. When so so let's let's change, let's pivot a little bit. Um, I know there is a lot more to cover as a as a first and second line leader that people can learn, but as as a landing and as a palate cleanser, um, when when you look back in your life, when when you look back, maybe your early or. Um, sort of adolescence, like, you know, early child, very, very formative years. Um, what what comes to mind, and, and take a few minutes if you need to think, or a few seconds, but what comes to mind as an impactful episode that marks or transferred to your leadership style today? Um, something that you learned when you were a, a, a child or a, or a young um, person that, you you look back and you bring back today and applying your leadership skills. Great question. Um, I don't know if there's one thing that I can say, this is what made me this way or how I view things that yeah. way. Um, what I do know though, is that um, I did have incredible parents who supported me with, every single possible means. Um, we didn't have all the means in the world, but I had an amazing support system and they understood me for, for me and my brother, for, for him and each other for each other. And, and so I have absolutely taken that um, perspective from my family. And I, I, I think of my team, I, you know, family's probably overused in the work, <laughs> work office, yeah. but I, I do uh, think the world of, of my team and I, I, you know, think of them as as you know family and so i think that upbringing really helped me and then also just naturally i'm i'm really really competitive and so that's one of those flaws but also one really of those benefits. really no yeah <laughs> yeah and so you know I, I was never you know the the best at anything i was really good at a lot of things but never the best at anything and, and just naturally over the course of time i i uh i I wanted to be the best and, you know, I'm, I'm a big believer in find one thing that you're really, really good at and do that to perfection. And, um, and so between my upbringing and then competitive nature, um, you know, my father is just very guy on this planet. I love him. Um, can't say enough about him, how incredible and impactful he is for, for me personally. But he, you know, come come college graduation, James, you're out. Good luck. <laughs> you know, military background, um, right, right? And so, what it did do is it it forced me in a really good way to say, okay, out of the house, out of college, what do I do? And um, between you know the, the the competitiveness, the internal drive, and then also the upbringing upbringing of um, be very hardworking, accountable trustworthy and just be great to work with those things um i, I had to apply to my to, to myself immediately in order to to survive and so yeah yeah when when i say work means the world to me it, it literally does because i don't think of it like that i i think of it as you know something that we're just so fortunate to have the opportunity to do with amazing people that we have the opportunity to work with yeah. and so um you know, the, the upbringing question, I would say a strong foundation of, of uh, parents and then also just a really competitive nature. And when I was cut off, I, I had to go get it. Yeah. And so yeah. it was uh, I look back at that and, and say, wow, what, I was so lucky to to go do that because 
if I hadn't done that, I don't know what I'd be doing now. So yeah, yeah, it's no, fun. fantastic. And and uh, uh, let me tell you, it it shines through um, the the values since since the day we met um, that your family instilled in you, and and that is is a tremendous impact impact on on leadership style. So. Yeah. Let's let's wrap it up for today. I I, I want to say first thank you so much, uh, James. I, the the person that I mentioned at the beginning is Matt G. I know you know Matt. No. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and yeah, he's yeah. probably the first person that's going to listen to this because it, he knows uh, you're there. So, um, just to wrap up, um, can you tell me or tell the people like who do you work for today? What the company does? A little bit of a plug there. Um, are, are you, yeah, sure. and, and where can people find you if, if that's the case? Yeah, absolutely. So I, I work for just a phenomenal company, Altrix, and yeah, we're in the, the data analytics space for, in software. Um, we provide a uni unified automation platform for, you know, business analysts and data scientists, um, data engineers to perform analytics, gain more from their, their data and, and, uh, you know, drive insights and transformational outcomes with, with their data. And so um, we currently, unfortunately, do not have any open headcounts. But like I've been mentioning, we've, we are in hyper growth stage. We've, yeah. We actually just filled our last role um, this past Friday with an amazing gentleman out of Ohio. Um, that said, we're going to hit 100 million in ARR on, on my team in Q2. Oh, my God. That's great. And we'll continue to grow and, and grow and grow and grow. Um, I, I love LinkedIn as far as, you know, makes me our too. professional yeah. network smaller. And so yeah. that's the easiest place to find me is, is James Dwyer at all tricks on LinkedIn. And so I'd, I'd love to hear from anybody that has interest in our company, has interest in, in meeting, has interest in talking. Um, I, I love conversations around, you know, the people aspect on what we do and, and how it impacts lives and, um, if it's just dialogues, um, or if it's structured conversations, that's, it's really helpful for everybody. And so I always seek those out myself and would be happy to talk to anybody. Great. Great. James, uh, thank you so much for being, being my first, uh, my, my first guest. Um, I, I want to sort of celebrate the, not only you as a person, but also the, uh, sort of high, high quality of leadership that you espouse in the company. I, I'm not surprised that that opportunity for a second line leadership came to you. Um, anybody would be uh, highly uh, impacted by by your level of leadership. So it's not it's not surprising to me. And um, I I'm better by by knowing you. So thank you so much, and and I appreciate the time and and everything you've shared today. And uh, looking forward to the next one. Yeah, thanks, Leo. Thanks for letting me open up and and talk from my heart and and for this opportunity. So it's it's just incredible to see you. And um, yeah, the same. thanks for having me the on same. your podcast. I appreciate the it. Same. Hey, thanks for listening. If you like this or any other episode of On the Journey podcast, please subscribe, like, or comment in your favorite podcast platform. This episode of On the Journey's idea, writing, recording, and production was created by me. Leo Rodriguez, and it was edited by Martes Multimedia, owned by Ricardo Urdaneta. You can find Martes Multimedia or Ricardo Urdaneta through Upwork.